All right, let's go ahead and clean up this mesh. They have it within uh, Photoscan. So again, we got our dense point cloud. We, here's our textured, our shaded mesh right here. And then here's our mesh with our textures on it that we have uh, saved. Um, I don't know if this is just a bug in the current version that I'm using, which is 1.3.5, but FBX seems to be throwing the location and scale off. So is STL. So what I'm going to do instead is go to export model. And we'll call this girl statue. We'll keep it as an OBJ. And I suppose we can go ahead and export a texture. We're not really going to need it, but we can go ahead and export it if you want to. And then once that exports, go ahead and open up ZBrush. And the idea here is we're going to import this object. We're going to make some modifications to it. We're going to give it new UVs. We're going to export it. And then we're going to reapply our point cloud data and our textures and photo scan to give us a new texture setup. So let's go ahead and go to Tool Imports. Go ahead and grab that OBJ file we exported out of PhotoScan. Open that up. Now, you're not going to want to move this thing. And if you do, or you can move it, but you're going to want to snap it back into position. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it alone for now. I am going to switch to a map cap gray. And I'm going to go over here to Subtool, and immediately I'm going to duplicate this off. So I'm going to always keep my original round to snap back or project detail to, and just have one uh, version sitting there that hasn't been touched yet. But we are going to go to this girl statue here. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn off Blur under my Dynamesh properties. Again, if you want to know the basics of ZBrush, go to my YouTube channel, watch Intro to ZBrush Part 1. That'll get you caught up to where we are now. You're going to see I'm using my custom menu. If you watch the Intro to ZBrush Part 2, I'll show you how to set all this stuff up. But I guess what I can do is go ahead and go to Geometry here. And instead of using my custom menu, we'll go down here to Geometry, Dynamesh. We're going to turn off Blur. Crank that resolution up. Let's try 736. Hit Dynamesh. There we go. So we got a new mesh here. It didn't really seem to change anything, although it did go ahead and close any holes we had in our object. That's just a feature or a function of Dynamesh. And now we can start using this mesh to make any changes that we want to. One thing I'm going to do is clean up this area in here. You're going to see the photogrammetry kind of got a little confused in these dark areas underneath her arms and stuff. So one thing we can do is go ahead and use a subtractive mesh to go ahead and cut these parts out. Now, we don't have to use Dynamesh. We can actually just go back to our original here and start masking and extracting and stuff like that. Uh, but I like to work on a copy here, and usually Dynamesh is a little bit more forgiving. This step may not be very necessary, but again, I like to keep my original safe. So one really easy thing we can do, we can go to hit BI Brush Insert, go to Insert Mesh Primitives, hit the M key or go up here and choose one of the Sphere options. We're going to do Sphere 32. And if I drag that onto my mesh, that's going to do an Insert Mesh Brush of a sphere on my object. Now, uh, what I want to use is this sphere to go ahead and subtract areas out of my mesh here. Now, in order to do that, I need to have the sphere not associated with this subtool. So what I'm going to do is go over here to Split, Masked Points, and that's going to go ahead and split my sphere off. Um, if I would have done Split Unmasked Points, that would have split the sphere off down below it. But all I really need to do is hit this bent down arrow with the sphere selected, and now it's below my girl statue. The reason that's important is what I can do now is go in here and hit that subtractive button, and then I can go up here to Live Boolean and turn that on. And you're going to see with Live Boolean turned on, I can go through here and start moving this sphere around. And no matter where I move it, it's going to want to go through and start cutting out these areas. Now, how do I tell ZBrush uh, to just cut out these problem areas? Well, you need to put or insert uh, a mesh in those areas. So what you can do is you can start with a sphere, and you can use that to kind of mesh around. Um, because we inserted that sphere onto the statue, you're going to notice it inherited those Dynamesh properties. So if we go into solo mode here, and we control drag, you're going to see that went ahead and Dynamesh the sphere. I'm going to hold down. Uh, I'm going to go to Smooth Stronger here. If you don't have Smooth Stronger, just go to your comma key here. Go to Brush. With your smooth brushes here, and just choose smooth stronger. And now, when we smooth, it'll go ahead and uh, it'll have a much stronger smooth effect. When we smooth, and we go out of solo mode, we're gonna go. You're gonna see that again. It's a subtractive shape. You can go ahead and sculpt on the subtractive shape here if you want to see what it's doing. Just turn on the polyframe here, and you can see uh, what your shape is doing in relative to uh, your object here. So you're basically gonna want to mush this thing around and start subtracting pieces out, and you're using Live Boolean to preview that. Uh, a possibly simpler way to go ahead and make this operation a little bit easier, instead of kind of moving a sphere around, what I'm going to do is start making objects using the topology brush to go ahead and extrude with Z Modeler and kind of cut through the model in a little bit more of an accurate way. 
Another thing you could do is if you do have one object inserted here, let's say, okay, I've got my sphere here and I'm just moving it around and I'm starting to cut through here. And I want to go ahead and add another object to start cutting through on this side. All you need to do is go to BI Brush Insert Primitives here. Hit the M key, we can insert a cube, and I'm going to insert a cube right here. And you're going to see when I insert this, if I go into solo mode, I just be, because I'm inserting an object onto this subtool, and this subtool is marked as subtractive, and I have Live Boolean turned on, already it's automatically going to be subtracting out of this mesh. So now you can go through here with this cube and start using this cube to kind of cut through your mesh. And you can go through here and you can scale this out a little bit. And again, turn on Polyframe if you want to see what you're doing, and uh, start using this to kind of slice through your mesh here. So if I unmask this, we go into solo mode and I control drag, you're going to see it's going to dynamesh these objects together. So we have one solid dynamesh mesh here and you can start using those separate meshes to start slicing through your object. Now what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to go ahead and delete that sphere and let's try something else.